Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today we're talking about, it's been a bit, talking about the Tacoma, some modifications, some updates, some things I'm kind of testing out and toying with. And we're gonna get right into that. I have a bunch of other stuff I wanna talk about, uh, project updates, stuff like that. I'll throw those at the end of the video and I'll just get into the truck. So this is, uh, you guys, if you follow my channel, you should know this truck. I've had it for eight years now, my 2016 Tacoma TRD Off-Road. This is, people ask once in a while, this is the legendary quicksand. This is the OG Tacoma here that has been on my channel forever. Wrapped it, it's been through a bunch of iterations. It's been kind of a test platform for development with partners and different brands and everything like that. So it's seen a lot of different changes through the years. And what you're seeing here is a kind of interesting take on something I've been wanting to try for a while and finally kind of pulled together. So over the bed, short bed Tacoma, I had an iCamper SkyCamp Mini for a long time. Great tent, no issues with it. And that kind of fit over here. I wished it was a little bit bigger, honestly, but it fit there and it was good. But I've always liked wedge tents as well. So this is, I've talked about it a few times on the channel, a new partnership with Free Spirit where I'm actually helping them in a lot of ways with a lot of prototyping and testing. And this is a production tent, so I'll be running their production tents as well. This one is the Aspen Light. This is the small one. And I had this idea where I said, well, now my, my truck's kind of longer, right? With the swing out, CBS swing out, spare tire, all this other stuff on the bed. So a lot of times people can run longer tents on like longer bed trucks. Otherwise, you gotta push the tent up higher so that way it's above cab height and then the rest of it extends out the front and that's kind of a popular setup as well. I wanted to keep things nice and low. So this is actually wildly perfect. Um, this is the, I'll talk about all this stuff. This is what this video is about. This is the up top truss bed rack system integrated seamlessly onto the Diamondback cover. This is actually Uptop's brand new roof rack, the Kilo. Uh, I'll talk more on that as well, but that is $598, free shipping. One of the cheapest, sleekest roof racks on the market. That's a brand new product from them. But back to kind of the theory was it would be cool to be able to run a wedge tent. I'll pop the tent and show the tent here for you in a second, but keep it nice and low. And since my truck is kind of longer, could I run a longer tent without the overhang looking too goofy? Now, obviously this is gonna be uh, a preference thing. I'm sure some people think, you know, maybe still looks dumb. I think it looks kind of rad. Like it kind of looks like uh, it gives the body shape of like a wagon, right? Like this is kind of like a RS6 shape or something like that. And I, I think it's rad. So functionally very cool because now you have the quick deployment of a wedge tent. It does overhang obviously, but it doesn't really overhang past what is already overhanging. And the fitment is just, I couldn't have plan this better. It's exactly the same height as the Kilo roof rack. This tent is exactly the same width as the roof rack. So it's like almost one continuous profile perfectly down the edge of it. So if you wanted to replicate this exact thing, you could. I have this pushed forward to the point where when this opens, you know, this top section moves a little bit closer to this rack, doesn't touch. So this is about as far forward as it can get and basically perfect with the swing out. So I will link to all this stuff down below. If you just want to skip ahead, uh, that'll be everything in the video description, armor, racks, tent, all that stuff. I don't know, some of it might be affiliate. If it can be, I always try to make links affiliate, so always appreciate you 
using those links. So anyway, that's it. Not much has changed on the truck since kind of the last few updates. So if you want kind of an update on this truck, I have detailed it very thoroughly on the channel. So let's talk real briefly. This is the up top kilo. So if you're looking for a roof rack for I believe 2005 to uh, second and third gen Tacoma. So 2005 to 2023. This rack will fit, no drilling required, just connects into the factory mounting holes. This aluminum, aluminum, and these bars actually to keep the costs nice and low, these, they manufacture these in-house. These are steel bars. Everything is adjustable. So you can put the bars at various spots along the rack. So if you need to space them differently for one reason or another, these obviously have a bunch of mounting slots that you can put stuff into and it is as low profile as it can get. So here's the shark fin antenna. It's, you know, maybe, maybe a quarter inch above it, maybe not even a quarter inch above it and super robust. So let me, I'll just kind of See if I can set my camera here without it falling over. These bars are always going to have a little deflection just because it's the nature of the beast, but I can put full weight onto a single bar. It doesn't deflect enough to touch the truck or anything. And that's right in the middle of the bar. So this, I believe it can handle like 250 or 300 pounds dynamic. That's like, off-road dynamic and something like 800 pounds static. And I think the, the design of it is super cool. I like the angles, the profiles. Up top has made a lot of their previous racks. A lot of people like them with kind of this V design. I like this much more. It's a lot more streamlined. This is, they sell a light bar that's up there. So the, sub $600 kit doesn't include light bar and doesn't include these handles. So I have a couple add-ons. These are up top handles. I've never put handles on my racks before, honestly, cause I've always just kind of reached up over and grabbed them. But people seem to love, love, love their handles. So I figured I would try them out and give them a fair shake and see if I'm a handle convert now, or if I still just kind of prefer reaching up over the top. I understand handles when you have like a rooftop tent or boxes or something that actually inhibits you from reaching over the top and grabbing it. But a naked rack, probably you don't need handles. It's when you start adding stuff on top that the handles kind of come in handy. And I'll tell you what, I've been using them and functionally they are nice. Aesthetically, eh, I'm not sure. I know a lot of people love the look of them. I probably like a, a clean rack. They also, I don't have them installed yet. They have basically rock lights in these angled mounts that are scene lights. So they have kind of a spot for them here and here, and they sell all that stuff on their site. So I'll get those installed as well soon. And then other than that, the only thing I have up here is my WeBoost antenna right now. I may mount some other stuff up here, but that's it for now. Anyway, that's the new Kilo rack. Uh, it's a brand new product from up top. I've had, I put this rack on, uh, up top installed it actually. I just took the truck down and I've had a lot of people asking how, like what my thoughts are and just kind of a little more detailed things. So yeah, instead of using the kind of off the shelf 80, 20 ex extrusions, that a lot of these low profile racks use. It's actually steel bent um, and they do all that in-house. So that's cool. They do the power coating in-house as well. And I like the profile of this kind of rack. I think it looks very good. I think the angles look very good. The cutouts obviously matches the aesthetic of my truck a lot. But then we move on to the bed rack system this is a new product as well. It's probably hard to tell on video, but this piece is actually two pieces that can slide. So they're lined up right now, uh, cut out the same, but they slide in one inch increments. 
So you can adjust, kind of infinitely adjust this to be fit perfect, the slots here and the slots here. So no matter what diamondback cover you have, these actually mount to the pre-existing cleat. So if you have a diamondback cover and you don't want to drill holes in it, this is a no drill option. They have a full height option as well. This is kind of the mid height option, which brings it, I'll actually grab a, I'll grab a tape measure here in a second so I can show you some specs, but kind of has all these little cutouts, kind of handles, and then you can mount obviously everything. I don't have anything. This is a new install, but you can mount your shovels, max tracks, uh, water cans, roto packs, all kinds of stuff on these kind of an infinitely adjustable setup. Let me cut over. People will ask, can you still open the Diamondback cover? Not with the tent on. When the tent is mounted, you can't because that's basically kind of locking everything together. But when the tent isn't on, you can actually fully open, not at the same time, but you can fully open one panel or the other panel with this setup. It's got four crossbars for supporting lots of load and they actually tie right in to the Diamondback cleats. So no extra drilling or measuring or anything like that. This system just works. So it brings your height up right above the spare and actually about seven or eight inches from the top of this to the top of this. The question then is, does this cover still open? You know, if you have no tent on top or anything. And actually it does, I gotta undo the little safety mechanism. Then it'll just go up. Now the rack system is a little heavier than not having a rack system on there obviously, but these struts are strong enough to hold this system up. Just a little bit of clearance over here as you could imagine, you can't open them both at the same time with this rack system on, but you can do one or the other. So pretty, pretty slick little setup. And yeah, I just figured I would show it real quick before the tent goes on. So for people that don't have a tent setup and are kind of just curious how that all flows together and how much of the Diamondback functionality you retain uh, pretty much, pretty much all of it. Uh, so, yeah. So just for reference off of the Diamondback cover, you're just shy of 12 inches, little over 11 three quarters inches from the actual bed itself, like the plastic cap of the tailgate. You're looking at just about 14 inches to the top of that rack. Room you have below is just under 10 and a half inches below the bars from the cover. So the interesting thing about these racks are this is just kind of a special attachment that allows you to mount it to the cleats directly. Uh, you can also mount these, they have a variety of other mounts that if you don't have a tonneau cover or if you have a different, I believe they have some mounts that work with other tonneau covers as well, you can use the same rack system. So you could buy this bed rack, mount it before you have a tonneau cover, then I'm assuming get just the adapter and then use the rest of your system that you already have dialed in to mount it to the Diamondback cover. So pretty slick setup there and then it brought it to the perfect height. Actually this little rubber end cap just barely touches my tire. This is a 35 inch uh, Toyo MT, Open Country MT, just for reference on the CBI dual swing out. So if you have a different setup than this and it's the angled tire as well. So if you have a different setup than this, you know, you'll, you'll have to take some measurements and see. But for this, it's perfect. And I don't know, I just think it's, <laughs> it's a really cool, cool setup. So again, I'm always trying to kind of theory craft new ideas and new setups for you guys. And luckily I have the, the resources and the relationships and the connections to kind of test, test stuff out that would cost, you know, the average Joe 
a lot of money and time and resources. I'm able to do it through partnerships and whatnot. So if this is a setup that you thought was cool or you've ever kicked around the idea of doing, I haven't actually seen, I'm sure there are people out there that, that have maybe this exact setup or something similar, but I haven't really seen it. So I know it's not a super popular setup. So yeah, another option for you Tacoma short bed swing out guys that might want a wedge tent. Now, this is a small wedge tent. This is the Free Spirit Aspen Light. They have an Aspen Light XL. The Aspen V2s are, are bigger as well. So you'll have more overhang with most wedge tents. This is one of the smallest wedge tents on the market. I believe it's only like seven inches thick. So again, your mileage may vary about how much overhang you have and how, how wide it is. This setup just happens to be absolutely perfect. But uh, this tent is being small. It means the interior is smaller. So if you're over six feet, probably this tent will be a little bit crammed for, for you if you have two. If you're in there by yourself, you can kind of sleep at an angle and that's good. But if you're over six feet and you're sleeping with one other person or, you know, a couple kids or, I mean, you might be able to do it with a couple kids or dogs or whatever, but just be aware it is a smaller tent, which means inside is smaller as well. Let's pop it up for you though, real quick. So this is the same tent I used in the Weekender Lander video. Uh, where I took the golf out camping. I really thought that would be a more popular video. I think my channel's currently shadow banned or something right now. All my recent videos have just not been uh, doing great. Even the one with like Mike Glover and Fieldcraft, which I thought would be a popular one. Uh, so that small tent is also good for a small car. As I showed, I'll link it up here. I always get turned around when I'm not in front of the camera. I'll link to that Weekender Lander if you're curious about it. But that was the same exact tent. Really cool wedge tent because it opens so high. So it really, really makes more room inside the tent when you're in there. And this bar that bends out takes a tiny bit longer to set up, but it's actually quicker than deploying, you know, getting the poles out and hooking them into loops for your traditional rain fly. So that's actually a quicker, easier setup than a rain fly. So kind of all things considered, you see the wedge tents just pop up and you're done. And I've done that and you are kind of done. Technically, you got to get your rain fly out. So this doesn't really take any longer. If anything, it's a little quicker than deploying a wedge tent and then setting up the rain fly. And this is kind of the rain fly already. But the beauty of it is it also actually in, that's interior space. It's not just an external rain fly. So that increases the interior space of the tent and acts as the rain fly. So I really like this wedge tent design just because it gives a lot more interior volume than your typical wedge tent without really any extra setup time. So this tent, it's not really a review of the tent, but I'll walk through some features real quick. It has on both sides, diesel heater ports as those are kind of becoming a lot more popular. You can kind of see the grids. Well, I don't know if you can, I can see it with my eyes, but I can't see it through the camera. There's these hex patterns here, and that's not just a design. It's kind of similar to how a down jacket is. This is actually insulation in here on these laser seams. So this is a kind of a true four season tent. A lot of the, a lot of the free spirit tents. Another value add is they're all pretty much, I think this one's the least, the Aspen light. They kind of wanted to keep it light. This tent's about a hundred pounds. Um, this is probably the least insulated of their tents, but it still has a lot of this tri-layer material around. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Doors on either side, ladders on either sides or on the back. This setup, since it overhangs a bit, normally you just kind of climb up here and then into the tent, but you can't do that quite as easily here. So here's how much it overhangs compared to the tailgate. Tailgate is a little bit 
deeper. But the other thing that's kind of cool is you're in here. Let me see if I can kind of show it. It's, you know, I'm, I'm a true 5'10". What that means is everyone on the internet that tells you they're six foot, six one, six two, I'm, I'm their height. I meet people all the time in real life that know I'm 5'10", and they don't believe that I'm 5'10". They're like, you're not 5'10". And that's not like braggy anything at all. Just so you know, people on the internet lie about their height, and I do not lie. So when you meet me and I tell you I'm 5'10", you'll probably assume that I'm six foot. I've, I've stood next to guys that said they're 6'1", six, 6'2", six six all day long, and a lot of them aren't. But anyway, I only say that to say I'm re on relatively flat ground, Tacoma, 35 inch tires. This is about the height of it. So it's not gonna affect me because the tailgate's here, so I'm not gonna hit my head on it or anything, but it does provide some kind of cover. So if you're cooking or preparing stuff, it's kind of like a mini awning even, and then you have all this space, and this is a great place to throw chairs or maybe ground tents or uh, other kind of tents, anything that you want. Pelican cases, a lot of stuff can fit back in here if you need more storage outside of what you keep in your bed. This is kind of my old rack systems and everything in here. But what I like to use it for when I'm out camping is just putting stuff. It's kind of like a two-tiered table basically a shelf, obviously. And that is super handy when I'm using the tailgate to cook or whatever. Obviously I have more, more tables with the dual swing out as well. So this is kind of a great, a great little workspace now, kind of made even better by this tent overhang. And then I'll show you real quick the inside of these tents. It's a black material, again though, insulated, uh, fully blacked out in here. So I don't know if you can tell, light, sun right there, super bright. You're not seeing any of that through, through anything. So if you like to sleep in and you want it to be fully blacked out, uh, it's got you. And the nice things are there's all these ventilation things up top. So you can be fully zipped up, but then have your ventilation for condensation. Uh, so that's, I don't know, these tents have a lot of really clever features in them, a lot of storage. You got multiple ways to store uh, jackets and whatnot in this pocket, clear pouches here to put your iPad if you wanna watch a movie. These mattresses are inflatable. I have it deflated right now because I had all my bedding and stuff in here, but inflatable and it's kind of dual density because you have this inflatable mattress, which is really nice. And then this is foam again. So all of the Free Spirit tents have basically this system underneath of bars and semi-rigid foam that rests across the bars. So that acts as the floor, but also an extra layer of padding. So anyway, that's kind of the setup I'm running. I posted a clip of this on Instagram, kind of the whole theory of wanting to run a wedge tent, short bed swing out, keep it low. And this is just kind of the longer form video of that. So that's that. This is new, new stuff. Anytime I add new stuff to vehicles, I like to tell you guys about it. These are new partnerships as well with up top. So. I'll be, I'll actually talk about that in a second with like updates and whatnot. But anyway, yeah, this exact setup, if you want to duplicate it, up top kilo, up top bed rack system. Like I said earlier, this is kind of the mid height one. They have a tall one that'll bring you up above cab height as well that uses the same mounts. And again, this whole rack system can, you can use this whole rack system if you don't have uh, a diamondback either. It'll just attach to your bed in a different way. And then also you can move this to different truck. If you get a different truck down the road with the modularity of these, these panels extending out, you can kind of choose your load bar spacing and move it from a short bed to a long bed. Uh, so it's kind of nice because you can you can take this with you to your next, kind of like you could take your rooftop with you to the next build if you want to. So that is that, kind of a really 
slick setup, a little bit unconventional, but that's what I like to do. When I first put my original CVT whatever tent on the Diamondback cover, that was a thing that didn't exist at the time. There were no products for it. I had to DIY for the OGs, you'll remember. My DIY solution actually broke and my tent kind of fell off on the trail. So I've been trailblazing unique setups on Tacomas since the beginning, essentially. So this is like as true to six years ago, Mike, as they come by just trying new setups. So I hope, I hope you liked it. I, I think it's really cool. I'll be taking this out soon. I haven't even taken it out on a camping trip. I just got back from a vacation, my first family vacation in like a decade probably. So getting back into the swing of things now. So anyway, yeah, let me know what you think of that setup. I actually got some comments on Instagram. I think I'm gonna try them out. Uh, they said, they were asking, could I flip the tent 180 degrees to where it opens over the roof rack here actually, and then I have like a rooftop deck. Like I walk out, you know, it'd be 180. So I walk out that door onto basically my patio, which would be my, my roof. Uh, and that, you know, might look a little weird, but functionally kind of interesting to me actually. So I may flip that around and, and try that out. So I love hearing comments from you guys, things I wouldn't have thought about before. And that was, that was one, I wouldn't have thought to try that because it's kind of, I don't know, I just didn't think about it. So anyway, love hearing your comments. Uh, I read them all. Uh, I try to reply to them if you have questions or whatever, let me know, but it's cool. I'm kind of up top Colorado company, free spirit, Colorado company. So very stoked to be able to kind of prototype things with them a little more. So yeah, leave me feedback down below. Before I get into uh, some other random announcements, I actually just got this a couple days ago. Well, not a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago. I forgot I went on a trip. This is, the Fantic's not like an official partner or anything of mine or a sponsor or anything like that, but they do send me a lot of their new products to try out. I really like their jump starters. They've been making some, some cool stuff. This is one, they just asked if I could show it in a video and I was like, yeah, actually I could. I use this to fill up. Uh, I aired down my Tundra when it snowed like three feet here and I got my tractor or I got my Polaris stuck plowing and I had to air down my Tundra and get it out. So I've actually tried this filling up four 37 inch tires from 10 PSI to 35 PSI and it got almost all four of them on one little battery charge off of this, which I was actually super impressed about. So I just back to back and then it got my last one to about 30 PSI, so it didn't quite make it. So yeah, little device, the cord actually rolls up, the hose rather rolls up into the bottom. You got some accessories in the bottom for inflating basketballs or whatever. Uh, and then I figure I'll just do a quick test because I'm curious about how fast it goes. We're at, you can't really tell, it's too bright out here. 15.5 PSI, I tried to go to 15, 15.5 PSI. The nice thing, battery indicator, and then you just set the PSI that you want it to go to. So I have it set to 35 and you hit go and it stops at 35. So it's super nice. I use these things. This is a, this is a long little spot, but unrelated to the device. I've had things like this in the past, I still do. And it's nice because you're airing up on the trail you just want to get home. After you air down a trail, you just want to get home. And you're airing up, and I'm not super precise. I'm just like, get close enough to drive home, and then, you know, I just want to get home. And when I'm home, then I kind of, if I want to, get them all perfect. And so a device like this, you can use on the trail, obviously. That's kind of what they're designed for. But just topping up tires at home, they're a little low or the temperature's changing a bunch. And you're like, I just want to set them all to 35. You just do it, set it to 35. You don't got to sit there and watch and you know, oh, is that right? Oh, you just set it and forget it. So we'll do that now. These are 35 by 1250 Toyo MTs on 17 inch wheels. So just to put all that into perspective and let's just hit go and start and see how long it takes. All right, so we're at three 
minutes, it took about three minutes and 20 seconds to get to 30 PSI. Just about there. And four minutes and 30 seconds to 35 PSI. So, I mean, not, you know, the fastest inflator in the world, but for a little portable inflator, really pretty impressive. Battery hasn't even gone down a notch. So I would guess based on my testing of relatively low PSI on the 37s on 17 inch wheels, you could fill all four of these 15 to 35 PSI, just to kind of give you an idea on one charge. And then you also have USB ports here, so you can use it kind of as a battery pack on the go if you want to charge some batteries up or phones or whatever. And has a little light as well. So anyway, cool little product. Every once in a while, there are things that I'm like, ah, that's pretty, that's pretty handy. And they're random one-offs like that. And I don't know like to share them with you guys. So I'll link down below. I think they did give me a coupon code. I'll link to it probably on Amazon so I get a little affiliate kickback if you're interested. So yeah, so let's talk about some other projects I have going on. Uh, I'm not too active on social media. I don't really, I honestly, for, for being a social media person, I probably dislike social media more than any other social media person out there. I just don't really like social media, like hate TikTok. Twitter sounds okay, but I, I'm like, who cares what I think? So I don't use it much. I do use Instagram a little bit. I very openly don't really like reels and kind of the direction that Instagram took. I don't even love Instagram. That I love YouTube. YouTube, YouTube I love. But anyway, all that to say, I post some stuff on Instagram. If you haven't figured it out, we're getting into kind of announcements and stuff. So if you don't care about me, the channel, projects I got going on, Feel free to leave now. I'd love it if you hit thumbs up, leave a comment letting me know that was helpful. Get subscribed because we're doing lots of Tacoma, Tundra, SUV, overland, camping, off-road style stuff. Getting way back into that. We kind of fell off a little bit when I built the house and was getting into a lot of other stuff. I'm actually gonna be doing a whole series on preparedness as well. Food, what, like all the things, power, I'm getting getting uh, solar, whole battery backup on the house, doing lots of cool stuff. So if you're into like preparedness, outdoor, mountain living, overland, off-road trucks, <laughs> this is the place to be. I'd love to have you. So what I got distracted before on Instagram, I let you know that I was actually selling my Tundra. So this is, people accuse me of buying and selling cars a lot somewhat true, but not necessarily. Again, I've had this Tacoma for eight years. I've had both my Land Cruisers for four years or so. They're not going anywhere. Like I don't really like to sell and buy cars that often. This one, this is the double cab with the 6.5 foot bed. Love this truck. I think it is the best spec if you don't need to put bigger things in the back seat. Uh, same wheelbase as the Crew Max with the 5.5 bed. I just think it looks better. I love this truck. When I first bought this truck, when they first came out, I'm kind of a early adopter in the Tacoma world, I guess. When I first bought the truck, I was like, I had a buddy, Philip, who had a 2021 or 2022, the last gen of the, the last year of the second gen Tundras. And he had both the crew, he has two Tundras actually, he has the Crew Max and he had a double cab, a double cab TRD Pro. And I was curious, I was like, oh, let me check out that back seat. And he has two kids and they were in car seats and he's like, the back seat's golden. It's like the perfect size for that. And it was, and I was like, sick, double cab is the way. Again, I was building the house and everything and I'm you know, kind of building a homestead. I wanted a little bit bigger bed and the back seat was gonna be big enough, sweet. So that's the truck I bought. I bought it, third gen Tundras shrunk. The interior space shrunk compared to the second gen. So dumb, I hate it, you know, whatever. I, then maybe they needed more bumper space for safety features or whatever but the dimensions of the truck stayed about the same, the bed space stayed about the same, but what you lost was like probably two or three inches in the back seat. So I was really disappointed in the back, speed, the back seat space 
of the double cab. I had a lot of you guys are like, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret getting the double cab. And I was like, I won't regret it. I've like, I've sat in the double cab. I have my, my one of my best friends has two kids. He has the double cab. He said it's perfect. What I didn't know was the shrunk the back seat in the new, the new Tundra. So I got the smaller back seat Tundra and I've been able to make it work. You know, I have a bunch of vehicles obviously, and that's not necessarily the main family vehicle, but a lot of times I'm, I'm taking the whole family. I want to go to Home Depot on and pick up a bunch of stuff or whatever. And I want to take the truck, not the SUV. Uh, like I just took the truck. We had a bunch of luggage, went to the airport and I was like, let's take the truck and fitting the car seats and everything in there. If you're I mean, if you're a short person, you know, if you're like five, five and you're a driver and got another five, five person in the passenger seat, you can make it work with rear facing car seats and all that stuff. It would be tight, but you can make, but I literally can't, I can't put a car seat behind my seat. I can't put a rear facing car seat behind my seat. Uh, and Ashley and I are planning to have another kid. So we're going to have two car seats plus another kid. We have a family of five now. So I was like, I'm gonna get the crew max. Probably you didn't care about a five minute spiel about why I'm switching. But anyway, all that to say, this Tundra is sold to one of you guys, uh, a subscriber or at least an Instagram follower. So he's gonna come out from Utah probably next week to buy this and I'm gonna get the crew max. I'm getting a new one. I'm picking it up tomorrow actually. So that build, starting from bone stock. And I kind of wanted to do this for a few reasons. Some people were like, why don't you return that to stock and transfer all the parts over and all this other stuff. Well, I hacked this truck up. I don't have the OEM parts. They don't even make green anymore. So even if I were to buy a green crew max, some of the parts would be interchangeable and I could, but it'd be a lot of work to take this back to stock, to move the parts over and I'm a busy guy. So for me, it'd be easier. I'm also changing some stuff up here and I have, I have partners and everything. And I thought this would be actually be a good, good opportunity to document in much more detail. When I built this, I was just kind of winging it. It was like early adopter of a lot of parts. A lot of things were prototype things that didn't change, fitment issues, not well documented. So this, uh, the truck is great. Like it's all built and come together great, but I kind of, limped my way through the build, figuring everything out as I went. So it wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a good video to give you guys on all that kind of stuff because, you know, it just, I didn't know. But with the new truck, it'll be a similar build. I'm going to lift it, put it on 37s, full armor, or at least front and rear bumpers. It'll be a similar build. And I'm gonna document the whole thing in more detail for you guys. I'm not that great about that kind of stuff. Ooh, got pieces of snow falling off my roof. I historically haven't been that good about that kind of stuff here. I just kind of like will install something in my driveway when it's 20 degrees and my hands are numb and I'm already swearing cause I stripped a bolt or whatever. And I'm like, I don't want to throw filming on top of that. So I've been historically not good at documenting modification, kind of showing you when it's done, but not showing the process. I'm going to try and do better on that truck. So this truck, uh, I've had no issues with it. I love the Tundra, love the platform. I do think like Ford and some of the other manufacturers definitely do some things better, but I've been very happy with the Tundra. I have zero issues, not a single problem. I have not had one problem with this truck. It has been great. Aside from this weird piece of trim here, this weird piece of trim, can you see it? Uh, I'm getting this fixed for the new owner though, under warranty. That's, <laughs> this has been my only issue with the truck. Yeah, just did some build quality issue right there that they're fixing under warranty. Actually, I'm taking it in tomorrow to get that fixed. Whew, it is bright out. Um, so that's the story of the Tundra. So that Tundra going bye-bye. And my advice to you, if you're looking for a Tundra, I'll talk about this more. I'll probably make a video with the new truck, the Crew Max, is if you got small kids, especially in car seats, and you're not a short person driving or a short person in the passenger seat, the, the double cab is gonna be small, no doubt, because it's shrunk. And people are like, well, I made it work in the Tacoma. You can't make it work in the Tundra? Well, the Tacoma 
uh, I don't know why they do this. This is called the crew cab in the Tacoma. The bigger back seat Tacoma is actually bigger than the small back seat Tundra. So a lot of people didn't know that. I don't know if that was the case on previous gen. I feel like the second generation Tundra uh, double cab back seat was more akin to the crew cab Tacoma. But anyway, I did get a lot of people asking me why I was making the switch, even though I outlined it pretty clearly because people were kind of confused. The back seat is very small. Uh, but overall, that is my favorite spec of truck. Actually, Talon just got that spec as well. He doesn't have any kids. Maybe he'll have kids eventually if you guys keep bugging him enough. Maybe he'll have kids eventually. But favorite spec of truck, if it's great. I've, I've talked about, I've made many videos about this truck. I actually like the small back door for just getting gear in and whatnot uh, in tight parking lots. So there are definitely advantages to this truck, but switching to the Crew Max. So I wanted to let you guys know about that. Uh, Golf R, doesn't seem like you guys care about that car at all if I'm basing view numbers of my last video on it where I took it camping, which I thought was a really cool, fun trip. But I am gonna do one video, already filmed it, already edited it, kind of like higher production quality video on the Golf R, and then that'll probably be it. That'll probably be the last thing, unless that video just crushes it. Uh, and you know, I just share little bits of my life with you and if you guys seem to like it, then I try more and you know, but we'll make more videos on it and you win some and you lose some. Tacoma stuff. So this is my Tacoma again. I said I've had it for eight years. If you watch the Talon uh, and me, the offshoot pod <sighs> cast, we talked about this a little bit, 2024 Tacomas versus the outgoing third gen. Do we like them? Are we gonna get them? Blah, 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 this and that. And I think I've talked about this in videos as well. Early adopter, I'm a YouTube guy. Probably if I was just a normal guy, I wouldn't get the, the fourth gen Tacoma. Honestly, I really, I, I like the third gen. Is it underpowered? Yes, but this is another truck that literally has never let me down. It has never not started. It has never given me issues. It has been a perfect truck for my eight years of ownership. So I don't really have a reason to go to the fourth gen. But with build partners that I'm working with, they, they like to do stuff on the new gens. YouTube people, they like to see videos on the new gen. So it's kind of not really, not being for, nobody's forcing me to get a fourth gen, but I am almost 100% set that I will get a fourth gen. But all these other early adopters are not getting the hybrid. Now it's interesting, this video is getting too long. I didn't get the hybrid on the Tundra because I feel like the power is sufficient. It turns the 37s no gearing effortlessly. It's beautiful, it's wonderful. From a lot of stuff, the fourth gen non-hybrid is more powerful than third gen, but not that much more. So if I'm gonna upgrade to the fourth gen, I wanna at least know that once I weigh it down and put, you know, I think the, I think 37s will go on the new gen and everything at, out at elevation, the turbo does help with that. I'm like, if I'm gonna do that, if I'm gonna get rid of a truck that's giving me no issues, you know, the new truck may give me mechanical issues, I don't know, but I want a big, big upgrade. So I love the backseat storage on the Tundra, more of kind of a daily driver. I keep a bunch of stuff in here. My Tacoma will be set up more as an adventure rig. So I'll have cases and places to put gear and stuff. So the backseat storage won't be as missed, I think. So if I do it, I'm going hybrid. So hybrids aren't out yet. They come out in the next month or so. I actually have an allocation for a hybrid model. I'll talk more on that later, but I probably will be, you know, a very early one of the first people with a Tacoma hybrid if I go through with it. What that means is there will be 2024 Tacoma content. I've already got people, a lot of people asking me my thoughts on them. I don't really have a ton of thoughts because I haven't used them. I, from what I've seen and I've driven it, I've actually driven one. Tuan has one. I drove it. It drives nice. Uh, but again, I don't think it's enough of an upgrade to justify the cost for someone like me that already has a fully built third gen Tacoma. I do think 
the fourth gens are better in basically every way. A little bit better in basically every way. So you'll see my real thoughts on that if I get one. And if I don't get one, I'll borrow one and let you know anyway. Tuan has one. He says I can borrow it whenever. So if I get one, a lot of people will be sad. A lot of people, you know, people unsubscribing already because this is the most, easily the most famous third gen Tacoma. The most famous Tacoma on the planet that has ever existed is this Tacoma right here. I know this. Dozens, hundreds of people have told me this. I've had no less than a thousand people tell me they bought a Tacoma because of me slash this truck. And this is not a toot my own horn, oh, I'm so great. I just started making the right videos at the right time and a lot of people, I converted a lot of people to the Tacoma and the overlanding the Tacoma and all this kind of stuff. So this is the most famous Tacoma in existence. I have a bunch of like influencer friends and they all say they got the Tacoma because of me. But I don't care about any of that stuff. I only, I only mention it to say that I know a lot of people will be upset because I know this Tacoma has influenced a lot of people a lot of you guys, I will be very, very sad to see it go, but I cannot justify having two of the same trucks. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of money. And then I'll have to split my focus between do I take the old Tacoma camping or the new Tacoma camping, or what do I do, or a new mods coming out, or I wanna put, test out some new light, new Tacoma, it's just, it's too much for me. So if I do get the new Tacoma, very sadly, sad myself and sad for everyone else, this Tacoma, will go up for sale. I have no idea how much I'll be selling it for. I need to look at the market. It's 2016 with 60,000 miles, pretty much everything done to it that can be done to it. Uh, I'm not looking to spin a big profit off of it being the most famous Tacoma in the world or something. I'll just sell it. Uh, priced in line with what these trucks are going for from any Joe Schmo. So I don't know. I think that's upper 40s or maybe 50K right now. So if you're interested in that, not quite for sale yet, but there's a 98% chance that it will be in the next month. Very sad. Don't unsubscribe. If you love to watch this truck grow, hopefully you will love to watch the, the 24 Tacoma tundra and other stuff that I got going on but very sad but such is life unless somebody wanted some rich oil chic wanted to pay me to keep it uh, I would do that if you're out there okay well that's it this video got way long <laughs> uh, it was like 20 minutes of announcements I know but I, I hadn't made an announcement video in a while it's been I've been I've been holding in all of this stuff so a lot of fun stuff coming up Hope you'll love it. I am very excited about it. And I feel like when I'm excited about something, it is good for you guys too. So lots of fun stuff to come. Developments with Up Top, with uh, Free Spirit, and with all my normal partners as well. But those are kind of some new ones that hopped on board that I'm excited about. So yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, what you want to see. You hate that I'm selling my auto I'm an idiot. You're going to unsubscribe. Hey, let me know that you're going to unsubscribe. Love to hear it. All right, well until next time guys, take care.